Oh, no. We, we have numbers coming back, but we have a superstar in house. We do. just walked uh, in the door. And he's standing right here next wait, 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 to us. Wait, wait. Say hello. The, how is the camera not getting Can we get a better camera Jensen, angle? <laughs> here. Jensen see who's here. here. He's here just to. Cameo he's appearance. doing some other so, stuff so, here. But. We don't have a microphone on you as a problem. Well, but I'm so, so excited to be on, on the air. Am I on TV? You're on TV. That's incredible. <laughs> oh, with Becky. <laughs> with the greatest show, the so greatest show, the greatest show in the world. This is the greatest show on earth. Wow, keep that, keep that tape. Oh. And by the way, with what is arguably the most successful company in America, in America. today. Well, yes. Can we just say that? Well, it's probably say that. I mean, just in, on in the trajectory it's been. Of, uh, Probably not quite market cap in terms of getting to this market yes, cap. Yes, unbelievable. Like 16 days or whatever the hell. It, it wasn't anyway. quite 16 days. 32 um, years and 16 days. That's what they always say about instant success. It's always like decades in the and making. Then you see. And then an overnight. Oh my God, we have a. Uh, do you hold on? Hold on. I have. We do have the PPI. Do you notice though um, the market fluctuations of your own stock? Like, do you look every day? Uh, not every day. Not every day. Yeah. Sometimes I'll look on. At at the end of the day. At the end of the day? Yeah. And you Sometimes feel good? Does it impact how good or bad you feel? No. Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure. I'm curious. No, because it, it does go up and down a lot. We talk about it every day. Are you interested in the PPI today and what the, uh, I, I know I said PP, but are you interested in the Producer inflation prices, date? We got to right do, now. I think we should there's, let Rick do there's it. There's nothing, nothing I could do about it, so my interest level is <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I still enjoy your show. Thank you. That's we love nice. having you here. Thank you. Guys. Thank Thanks, you. Jensen. Our Seema Modi is on the story for today's Tech Check. Hey, Seema. Hey, Carl Srebris is backed by some of the biggest names in tech, KOTU, Benchmark, Altimeter Capital. It designs artificial intelligence chips for inference that its CEO, Andrew Feldman, an ex-AMD executive, says are cheaper than NVIDIA and AMDs. And unlike the industry's obsession with smaller chips, Cerebris wafers are over 50 times larger than its rivals, which Feldman told us helps speed up processing. Now, amid this AI boom, the company's S1 revealing growth is accelerating with an over 200 percent jump in 2023 sales though not profitable some of the customers include GlaxoSmithKline the U.S. government and a conglomerate in the UAE named G42 that makes up a majority of its revenue 87 percent of sales in the first half of this year the S1 also noting that the dependence on its relationship with G42 opens it up to a number of risks like changes in demand from the state-backed tech company or changes in regulation now it's no small feat of course going up against a company like NVIDIA the dominant player in AI chips, and there's a high switching cost. That's why Wall Street analysts say the big question is whether Cerebris can secure a large order from a hyperscaler that currently uses some of the bigger names like NVIDIA to build their AI models. Similar to NVIDIA and the rest, Cerebris does fab its chips with Taiwan Semiconductor. Now, I'm told a five-year-old semiconductor company plans to go public this fall, targeting a valuation of $7 to $10 billion. Some investors in the private tech market are optimistic that this could open up uh, a new wave of AI IPOs. Rebris would be one of the first companies to debut uh, from one of the many AI startups cropping up in this new era. How investors, of course, receive it in the public market will be a big signal for new IPO ho hopefuls, guys. Well, we've been waiting for IPOs. Now we, we know how to say it. And I guess if you're going to go public, you should be a chip competitor to NVIDIA right. on AI. Thank you, Seema. Seema, yeah. thanks. Everybody that you come in contact with, and I mean everybody, says to you, oh, you're in the investment business. What do you think about NVIDIA? And they're, they're people who have no idea what NVIDIA is. I feel so like, don't it, you feel like that's cooled down a little bit? Yes, yes, but that's good. That is healthier for the market. It's Fervor like about saying all that GameStop. Is it's like we should all own GameStop because we heard it from the person cutting our hair. I don't think so. So it's the same dynamic. You have to have something broader. And the professionals who are buying these stocks, I mean, we know the companies we're buying. It's not just the S&P index that's, that's moving higher. It's other buying in addition to it. I'm not suggesting we're not going to have NVIDIA earnings watch parties anymore <laughs> because they're still going to be a thing. But it does feel like a little bit of the fervor about that has cooled a bit, which is which is good. I mean, you make the argument that, that that's good. Now, you know, outside of the mega caps, you do have uh, the filing of an IPO by a chip maker. It's uh, Cerebras. Maybe they'll take on NVIDIA. Uh, the latest funding round valued that company $4 billion. Backers include Sam Altman, Code 2 Altimeter, Benchmark, uh, plans to go public uh, in the NASDAQ. Joining me now, back at Post 9, Vantage Rocks' Avery Sheffield. Welcome back. Great to be here. So you're not as bullish as some of the others who've been on the program here before you today. No, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, 
the market is expensive, right? 21 and a half times the S&P, 28 times the NASDAQ, a cyclically adjusted Case Shiller 35 times. It's actually almost the second highest. It's been back to the early to late 1800s. Um, you have put call ratios ex expressing extreme bullishness. I, this is a market where people are excited as your previous guests, who I greatly respect, I think demonstrate people are excited. And when everyone's on one side, I always wonder, is this really as good as, is it really going to be able to go further from here? And you really feel like everybody is sort of now on, on one side of, side of the boat? It feels like, I mean, valuations would suggest that, sentiment would suggest that, but call ratios would su suggest that. Yeah. I feel very much like a, a lone, more cautious investor at the moment. Well, I mean, there are reasons to be bullish, no? That's what they say. Fed's cutting, economy's much stronger at this point than people yes. thought it would be. And we're just at the first stop uh, uh, on the train tracks of, of these cuts. Right, well, the question is what's priced in, right? So. In, if, 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 if we look back at, you know, go back to where the, the, the market bottomed, the market bottomed at the end of October 2022. We were worried about the economy getting worse and the Fed having to cut at some point. We had infrastructure spending ahead. We had onshoring spending ahead. We had AI excitement ahead of us. The market was at 15 times then. Here we are, you know, two years later, markets at 21 and a half times and AI spending has already massively taken off. Continue going to well, continue it's not over. strong. It's not over, but is it is it accelerating from here? Spending, or spending accelerating, Maybe. growing at a faster pace than it's grown so far. I'm not sure it's going to grow at a faster pace. It's going to continue to grow a lot. There are going to be a lot of dollars, but is it going to grow at a faster pace than it's grown? I don't know. Are we going to see infrastructure spending grow at an accelerated rate from here versus what we've seen over the past couple of years? From what I'm seeing, it looks to be more stable, right? Our, and then for in terms of Fed rate cuts, yes, we are here with rate cuts, which should be stimulatory. Um, the re only reason we it's taken this long is because the economy's been better. Yeah, for, for, for good reasons, for right? Good, for good reasons. But what we've had is we've had the economy, or sorry, the market front run those rate cuts, right? So you look at many industrial stocks. You look at stocks in the housing sector. You mm -hmm. look at stocks in trucking. They're trading at near all-time highs on potentially depressed earnings with the expectation that rate cuts are justify the valuations. But then when you get those rate cuts, how much upside is there to the stocks from there? Okay, so you think a lot of it is just in, in the market. What, what areas of the market do you like? Because when you yes. sat down and you said you're kind of uncomfortably the bear, Right. out of the group thus far on the show. It's not yes. like I don't like anything, but what do you like? Yes, yes. Well, I mean, we tend to have more of a barbell approach to our portfolio where you have kind of those steady, kind of compounding ballast positions, mm -hmm. reasonably priced, not as cyclical, and then and then cyclical opportunities. So on the, on the kind of more ballast side, we continue to like the telecommunications companies. I don't think many people are aware that actually you've had two of the major wireless carriers in the U.S., their stocks were up around 30% this year. Like, they massively outperformed the market, but they're still quite cheap at 7 to 10% free cash flow. They did US. underperform prior to that, didn't they? But the whole point is what has been the opportunity for this year and what's the opportunity from here. And I think people are really underappreciating how this industry has become more consolidated. Family plants are creating a stickiness factor where they're not having to spend as much to keep you. Churn is coming down. Mm -hmm. And also each of them has a secular growth story, whether it's fixed wireless or fiber. Um, that has a high ROI for them to build out their broadband businesses over time. Look, very slow growth, but just way too cheap. Solid, steady businesses. If rates are coming down, where can you get a 7 to 10% return to shareholders every year? So we like that. We also like areas in cyclicals. So we're, we're more cautious on cyclicals that we feel like are pricey in a lot of Fed cuts. But there are still areas of cyclicals that are very cheap. I hope you found today's video valuable and enjoyable. I'll catch you in the next one, and as always, wishing you all the best.